Hi, this is Elizabeth Swider with Cares Air Geriatric Care Management. I'm here with Bill Murphy at Rivanna Hearing Aid Center because I'm here to get my hearing checked. I've been wanting to do this for some time. I've never done it before. I'm not sure if I have hearing loss or not, but I'm finding that when I'm in crowded rooms, I don't hear everything. So I came over to Bill Murphy. Um, Bill and I know each other, and I know he gives free hearing tests here. So I'm here to get my hearing uh, my hearing checked, and I wanted you to be here with me so you can see how it goes. So Bill's going to take me through the process, and you can be here with us. So, Bill, why don't we get started, right. and um, let me know how you do hearing tests. We can do that. First, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what your opinion of your hearing is. Do you feel like you're hearing like you're supposed to, or you said you had a bit of an issue when there's crowds involved? That's right. That's been the, really the thing I've noticed, that if I'm in a crowded room, I will have to kind of lean in and, and maybe ask somebody what they're saying. And it seems like the other people that are with me don't have any trouble understanding. So it made me begin to wonder whether I had less hearing than they have and whether I should have it checked. Okay. One of the nice things about doing it this way is that even if there is no loss, we will keep your hearing on record okay. so that you can always look back and say, you know, this is where I was at 2012 and now okay. at 2013 and 2014. And if, if there is a problem, it's kind of easy to track that way. I hadn't thought about that. Okay. Yeah, it, work, it works out very well. Mm -hmm. uh, your typical motivation is just that you are here to find out yourself. Most mm -hmm. of the time we have someone who is sent in by a family member. So you're a little bit different in yes. that respect, and that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. A uh, few questions I need to ask you to satisfy the FDA. Yes. In the last 90 days, have you had any drainage out of either ear? No, I have. Pain or discomfort in either ear? No. Nope. Do you have any ringing in your ears, any chirping, any roaring? No, ringing, chirping, roaring. Okay, that's very indicative of a high-frequency loss is okay. why I ask you that. Uh, can I assume if we find a hearing loss that this is the loss that came across lowly. It's not something where you woke up one day and couldn't hear. That's right. If, if indeed I do have some hearing loss, it would have come, uh, come around slowly, not quickly, yes. Okay. Do you remember any childhood trauma as far as having the eardrums lanced or uh, ear no, aches, that aware. sort of thing as a child? Nothing I'm aware of, no. Good, good. Okay. Nothing different dizzy-wise in the last 90 days? Nope. Okay. Uh, which ear do you typically use on the phone? My right ear. Okay. Are you left-handed? No, I'm right-handed. Okay. I'm right. learning to play racquetball with my left hand, but I'm, I'm right-handed. Okay. <laughs> Would you like it? Well, that's an advantage I'd like to have. Yes. Uh, have you had, ever had a stroke? No, I haven't. Okay. Are you taking any medication that affects your hearing and you would know if you are? No, I'm not. Okay. Good. Good. Never worn hearing aids and you're that's not right. a diabetic? No, I'm not. Great. Great. Okay, in a minute I'm going to do a test on your ear, on your hearing, mm -hmm. but I want to kind of explain the audiogram to you so you know what I'm looking for. Okay. Okay. This is a standard audiogram. You'll be able to see it later better yes, on. Yes, great. Okay. I'm going to make a few so you know where the parameters are. Anything from here up is good hearing. Okay, from which point up? That's from 25 decibels up. 25 this decibels is what up. we refer to as an acceptable loss. Okay. Okay. Volume goes this way. The further I go down the page, the louder the noise had to be for you to hear it. I see. So, if you could not hear a shotgun blast, I'd mark that down here. If okay. you could hear a whisper, we would mark that up here. All right? From here down is what we refer to as a profound loss. Okay. You are nowhere near that category, or I'd be screaming at you right now, okay. trying to get you to understand what we were saying. Yes. This area in the center basically just needs help. Now, the good thing about having a loss in the center section right here is that hearing aids are very predictable. We know what it takes to get you from here up to here to where you hear well. Okay. So, yes. makes life a little bit easier. We're worried about the shaded area. Mm -hmm. That's where we hear speech. That's our main reason for hearing. And because you said something about possibly having some issues hearing in a crowd, mm -hmm. I'm going to break it down just a little bit further. On this side, the low frequency side is where we hear the heavier sounds. This is where we hear uh, fog horns, okay. uh, trucks out on the driveway, compressors running, that sort of thing. Come to us on the low frequency side. Okay. In English, this is also where we hear men 
and where we hear the vowels. Mm -hmm. On the opposite side of the track, on the high frequency side, is where we hear women, children, violins, birds, and it's also in English where we hear the consonants, mm -hmm. which for us is typically the start of the word and the end of the word. Mm -hmm. Someone with a high frequency loss would hear me say at very easily, but the word could have been rat, cat, fat, bat, hat, slap. Uh -huh. So there's a lot of room for misinterpretation excuse me, misinterpretation. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to find out. From here, from 2000 to 2400 hertz is sort of where the loud sounds and the soft sounds come together for our hearing. We do basically 35% of our speech interpretation in that area. Okay. Okay. I'm glad you came in without thinking that you had a hearing loss. A lot of times people know they have a hearing loss and they put off coming in and they put it off, and they put it off, and they put it off. Mm -hmm. And what happens is the mind actually loses its ability to process word sounds. And we're going to talk a little bit wow. more about that okay. when, we, when we do the exercise. So it makes sign. sense to come in early if you suspect it does. Have any It does. If you have a hearing loss, typically you can get a free hearing test, mm -hmm. and it at least gives you an idea of what to look for. And if it doesn't change between this year and next year and the year after that, there's a pretty good bet that's pretty much as bad as it's going to get. Mm -hmm. But at least you have a line in the sand where you can say, you know, I was here in 2012. Mm -hmm. Hopefully this doesn't get any worse. Great, okay. So, I've already learned something. <laughs> that's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, I've got a small picture of the ear here. It's mm -hmm. not very complicated, but I want to go through real quick just to kind of show you what we're looking for and what's happening. Okay. Sound goes into the canal, tickles the tympanic membrane, it kind of vibrates the oscillus chain. We learned them in high school as the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup, the yes. three smallest bones in the body. That in turn stimulates some of the fluid going into the cochlea. Now each ear has a cochlea. The cochlea has 30,000 nerve endings in it. When it gets a uh, stimulus like that, it sends an electromagnetic response to the opposite side of the brain. So what you hear in your left ear is actually interpreted in the right side of your brain and vice versa. That becomes important on a couple of different planes. In the old days, if someone came in with a hearing loss in both ears, they would only amplify one side. Mm -hmm. What they found out is that they could test that person four years later, and the ear that had been amplified sometimes could repeat words back at 80 and 85 percent accuracy. The ear that had been ignored could be as low as 60 or 65 percent. Hmm. So what we've come to realize is that the longer you have a hearing loss and you don't stimulate these nerve endings in the cochlea, the harder it becomes for you to process word sounds. Hmm. Just a hearing loss is not always the issue. So we encourage people to get a hearing test yearly. Just kind okay. of keep track of that. We'll find out more about that as we go along. If you had come in and said you had a hearing loss, I would at this point ask you to just repeat some words for me. And I'm mm -hmm. going to go ahead and do that, but okay. we'll probably want to knock them out in just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay? So without looking at me, if you want to close your eyes, are you having any trouble listening, hearing me right now? No, I'm not. I want you to repeat a few words for me. Say the word then. Then. Say the word else. Else. Say the word cap. Cap. Say the word thin. Thin. Say the word carve. Are. Very good. Okay. Okay. Basically what that amounts to is unaided discrimination. That gives us an idea of where you're at. It's not unusual to have people miss 60 or 80 percent of those mm -hmm. words mm -hmm. if they've had a hearing loss for quite a while. So okay. mm -hmm. what I'd like to do now is I'm going to ask you to turn around and face the screen and mm -hmm. I'm going to look inside your ear and we're going to take a look at the tympanic membrane and okay. see what's going on. All right. What I'm looking for is kind of a moon, looks almost like an eyeball all the way down the bottom of the canal. If you watch that screen okay. right there. Huh. I'm going to pull back a little bit just to straighten the canal some. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's your tympanic member. Ah. Right. Uh -huh. Clear and it's taut and looks good. Whatever you're doing for wax control is working. You've got a little bit of wax in the outer third of the canal, and that's very typical. That's where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. Okay, you can see clear, taut. 
just like it's supposed to be. No problems there. A little bit of wax in the outer third of the canal. Looks healthy and clean. That's good. Great. Great. Okay, now let's go over to the booth. Okay. We're on. Okay, good. Good. Bear so with me here. The booth, so tell us about the booth. Okay, this booth is basically to keep the outside noises down to a very minimum. But because we're in a very quiet office today, we're probably going to test you with the door open. If you tell me there are outside sounds that are bothering you, I'll turn it off. But I think you'll find that's not going to be the issue here. Okay, bear with me just a second. I'm going to This headset and the audiometer are calibrated once a year with each other. You'll look that way for me. I feel like I'm in a time machine. I understand. <laughs> okay, and if you'll look that way for me. Okay. The other way? Yeah. Yes. The other left. The other left? Yes. <laughs> Oops. Okay. And if you'll hold on to that for me. Thank you. Bear with me here just a second. Okay, I'm talking to you strictly in your left ear right now. How does this sound? Too loud? Too soft? Or is that fairly comfortable? Um, say it one more time. I'm trying to find a volume that's comfortable for you. Yes, that's comfortable. Does this come across okay? Yes. All right. Bear with me here just a second. Okay, I'm on the right side right now. How does that come across? Pretty good. good, great. Now, I'm going to turn them each down just a little bit and then turn them on. This should be by Noel. How does my voice come across right now? Is this comfortable? Yes, it is comfortable. Okay. Uh, is one side louder than the other or does this sound more like stereo? I think the left side is a little um, louder. What if I go up like this? Does that kind of straighten that out? Does that seem comfortable? Great, great. Okay, so what I'm trying to find now, I'm trying to establish what we call the most comfortable level. And this would be a volume that if you were watching television and this is where it was set, you'd be willing to sit and listen to this for possibly a long period of time. So if this is comfortable, we'll come back to this in just a little bit. Okay, now... You have a switch in your hand, a little red button. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to start with your left ear and you're going to hear a beep, beep, beep sound in your left ear. Sometimes it's going to be real easy to hear. Sometimes it's going to be very faint or maybe even a little bit distant. If you hear it at all, I want you to push the button to let me know that you heard it. Okay? And that's, we're going to go through a couple of different frequencies and that's how we're going to figure out if there's a loss there or not. So, this part goes fairly quickly. When I get done with the left ear, I'll tap on the booth to let you know we're swapping sides, and then we'll go from there. Here we go. We're going to do the other ear now. Okay, Elizabeth. Now, you told me earlier this was a comfortable volume for you. Is this still pretty good? Uh, um, based on your question of whether I watch television at this level, I would say a little bit... Um, Great. I want to remind you, I have all the volume in the world on this side, okay? <laughs> we can cross your eyes from here. After doing a quick test, I want to go back and redo a frequency here. Your right ear is showing phenomenal hearing. Very, very good. Your left ear is quite symmetric except for one frequency, which is a little bit different. A uh, big drop at 3,000. And uh, I want to go back and retest that just to make sure. And then uh, from there we're going to do a, a few other exercises. So I'm going to go back to your left ear for right now. Okay. 
Okay. We're going to go through a couple of exercises just because you are showing a loss on the left ear just a little bit. Okay. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to set the volume. We're going to isolate each ear. I'm going to set the volume where you told me it was comfortable. And then I'm going to ask you to repeat some two-syllable words, things like hot dog, cowboy, that sort of thing. While you're repeating them back to me, I'm going to make the volume softer and softer. I'm looking for a threshold. I'm looking for where you no longer understand what I'm saying. So if you're not sure of the word, you can help me here by guessing. Okay. Okay? So we're going to start with your left ear, and it's going to get softer and softer. Okay? I'd like you to say the word. I want you looking straight ahead, though. I don't want you watching me. Sometimes, sometimes you cheat, you know. <laughs> okay, I'd like you to say the word greyhound. greyhound. Say the word schoolboy. School say the word inkwell. Ink well. Say the word whitewash. whitewash. Say the word pancake. Wow, I just, um, That's okay. Pancake. Say the word mouse trap. Mouse trap. Say the word eardrum. eardrum. Say the word headlight. Headlight. Okay. Say the word birthday. Oh, I don't know what that is. I'm going to get. That's okay. That's okay. Now, earlier we talked a little bit, and you told me that this was a fairly comfortable volume for you. Is this still a pretty good volume for you? Great. Okay, we're going to do the right side now. Earlier... When we were at the desk, I asked you to repeat some words for me, and you did very well with them. But this would be the part where we would find out how well you should do had you missed some of those words. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do just a quick practice run with this. We're going to do one ear at a time. I'm in your left ear only right now. How does that sound? Comfortable? Too loud? Too soft? Okay. Uh, we're just going to run through ten words very quickly, and I want you to repeat back what you hear. If you would, say the word and, say the word yard, say the word carve, say the word us, say the word day, say the word toe, say the word felt, say the word stove, say the word hunt, say the word ran. Great. Okay. Now, I'm over here on the right side. Is this still a comfortable volume for you? Would you like it louder, softer, or how does this sound? Sounds good. Great. Let's do just a few more words. Say the word knees. Mm -hmm. Say the word not. Yeah. Okay. Let me tell you that typically, if you had a major hearing loss, we would have gone through 24 words on each ear to go ahead and find out exactly how you were. And then we would have done another 20, 24 to find out how you did binaurally. Because you didn't show a loss, we can pretty well go by the first 10 words to see that you're doing very well with what you're hearing. There's one more part of this test, and then I'll get you out of there, okay? What I'm going to do next is I'm going to put a bone conductor behind your ear, and you will hear the beep, beep, beep that way. So what I am going to do is ask you to take off your glasses for just a minute. When you hear the beep, I want you to push the button so I know that you heard it, okay? Now, when you hear the beep, I want you to push the button for me. Okay. If you had shown with a big loss, at this point I would have put the information into the computer and I would have set up a pair of demo hearing aids for you to try out so you could actually see what they sounded like in the office. Maybe we could arrange for you to take them to lunch or whatever just to kind of give you an idea of what you're missing. Okay? In your case, it's going to be a little bit difficult to do that. If you'll watch what I'm the chart here. We find that if we follow your right ear across, remember I told you that 25 was a loss? Yes. Look at your right ear. You're at 10, 10, 15, 20, mm -hmm. 15, 15, 20. Your right ear is in very, very, very good shape. No issues with the hearing there at all. Okay? Bit of an anomaly on the left ear, just a bit. It's quite symmetric with the right. 
Okay, you're, you're reading it. 10, 15, 15, down to 20. Now, at 3,000, for whatever reason there might be, you drop down to 45. Okay? Mm -hmm. and then there's a big jump back up to 25 and to 20. Mm -hmm. So, I would tell you at this point that while you do have just a very small loss right there, mm -hmm. it's not going to be worth your effort to purchase a hearing aid to try and compensate for it. Mm -hmm. For a couple of different reasons. The only thing you could get that would compensate one frequency like that would be a very expensive hearing aid. Mm, okay. Anything else is going to give you too much sound over here where you hear very, very well. Mm -hmm. So it would be basically a waste of your money mm -hmm. at, at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay, But it is good to have this on hand as long as this doesn't change any. Mm -hmm. you're, you're in pretty good shape. Well, this is... Um it's great news for me because it sounds like, you know, I have, it looks like at a particular frequency I have a loss, but not so significant that I should be concerned. No, no. But also it sounds like by having uh, come and having my hearing sense tested, I'll have sort of a baseline to see exactly. where I am so that if I, if I think, you know, in the future, wow, it, my hearing really does feel like it's getting worse, that I can have it tested again and see where I am now. And you said you recommend having it tested once a year? Once a year. Mm -hmm. Once a year. More if you think there's an issue or a problem. And I have people that come in just so they can get put on the camera and we can check to see because mm -hmm. some people build up wax at a much faster rate than others. Okay. And, it, and uh, some of them are set up to go see their doctor once every six months and have it cleaned out and they've taken to come to see me first and we see if there's anything in there okay, worth cleaning yeah. out. So it kind of kind of saves a visit and, and makes things a little bit easier. So. Okay, great. And, and you, um, so you're doing hearing tests here for free. How do people get in touch with you to have that done? Okay, 434-244-3277. Uh, uh, Rivanna here in Aid Center. We're in the newspaper. We're, we do a little TV ad and we're in the yellow pages. Okay, great. And you're um, right on Pantops in Charlottesville. What's True. your street address? It's a 182 Spot Nap, mm -hmm. right off of Pantops here in Charlottesville. Uh, we do ask you to call mm -hmm. and make an appointment. Mm -hmm. Typically, it doesn't, it takes about 45 minutes, but we try to do this where we don't have people waiting out front. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very concerned about that. We don't want you upset by the time you get back here. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So. Well, it's always a pleasure being with you. And like I said, for some time I wanted to have my hearing checked. So I've been looking forward to today. And the process is really quite fun. It's kind of like playing a game. And it's, I'm curious about, you know, what my ear looks like inside and, um, and about how I hear these different frequencies. And I really appreciate you taking the time to explain to me what it all means and how it all works so that I can put it into context. Well, I'm glad you showed up. Thank you very much. I appreciate you, you coming in. It's been great. Appreciate that. Right at a hearing aid center, this is Bill Murphy and Elizabeth Swider with Carrie Care.